All right, now I'm going to show you a workflow. So basically, uh, I have an image that I drew on paper, and then I emailed it to myself. It's a rough sketch. It's all you really need. And uh, according to this, it needs to be rotated. I'm just going to say keep orientation. And then I'll, I'll be in the program, maximize this out. And I'll transform and rotate it here. So I need to go clockwise, I believe, here. Yep. All right rough sketch. Now what I'm going to do is just take and make sure it's a layer. So under here, open up layers. Make a new layer on top of it and hit OK. So the transparent layer. This one, I can really tone this down so I don't get distracted by things. Just enough so I can see the line art. And for this one, I just uh, begin to start tracing out the form. So I'll use ink and I'll start utilizing my lines or getting my line width down. You can see that's too big. Better, but I want some style. Good. Better. And now I'm not going to fight the form, I'm going to go with the form. And I'm going to be relatively zoomed out, not too much. And I'll say, well, again, that's too thick. And I think the longest part is actually just getting your pen to work correctly. And I would say use these settings, but that changes. All right, better. This is this is good. I like this. And you can see the weight of it really does slow it down. And there's a little bit faster. That feels a little bit more natural. Good. And once you get your brush settings down, let's start making lines. And if you mess up on a line, just delete it. Start over. Do it in one stroke. Leave some style to it. Now again, whether it be your drawing or something else, you know, this is this is a form of style. So uh, what's going to happen is your your style of drawing might be a little bit different. The point here on this actually lesson, the real truth is is just the ability to take your digital camera on your on your phone and utilize it as a scanner. You don't need a fancy scanner. Not if you know the software. Some of these I'm just kind of straightening out because I know they look better that way.
and the accidents occur if you go over it's the flow Feel you messed up, just go back. Not Frogs really don't have nostrils like that, but I do want some form of eye in here, just for the style of it. And I'll leave it like that, I'll fill in the rest black. Okay, so now I can shut this layer off, and I get this frog. Good line art frog. Now what I can do is make a new layer, bring this down and fill it with white. But I'm going to fill it actually with gray because I find white really annoying to look at. It hurts your eyes in some manner. And now at a really low level, I can start just filling in these forms. Now, also, the brush size is set to, uh, you know, really, if I use the bracket key, it goes from 2 to, like, 13. And what I'll do is I'll sketch on this frog a little bit. And then we're going to live trace it. So what I'm going to do is clean up my art line work here, um, blend the forms together. It's very incredibly boring to watch, but you get the context of the beginning, and that's what's really important. And then in the next video, we'll live trace it, and then maybe produce some color to it or something else. So, meet me back in the next video. Drawing tip one. Connect your lines. Don't leave gaps. Uh, if you leave a gap, you can't use or utilize some of the tools. So it's really handy to like seal up your artwork. So these gaps like here, for example. I keep the line style. But in the long run, what I'll do is I'll seal up my forms. And you'll see in the end, when it blurs just a little bit, it won't matter about any of that as far as like, uh, this is a little thinner, that's a little thicker. None of those concepts are what matters. So seal up your forms. It's very important. Just want to put that on a on a tip. I think that's my only tip as far as that is concerned. Fix up your lines, but seal your forms. If this is all green in this area, leave it that way. But if it trained to do different colors, make sure you seal those up. All right, move on to the next video. Using layers. So important to know that when you go to do your line art, you can do this. Okay, so. This is my outline. These are my, my all my cross hatching. Okay. And then up here is my color. So here I'll destroy color because really I think you could understand that if you make a layer you can put your outline on and put something like your cross hatching on another layer. But the next one, let's see if, if I made a new layer here. This one's a little trickier because what you're going to have to do is have sealed artwork in order for this next step to work. In other words, here in the magic wand tool, 
if I click anywhere on this layer, you'll see that it, it highlights all this layer, but nothing of the frog on the inside. And if I hold shift into this area, it highlights that area. If I see a little tidbit every once in a while, that's okay because it's not part of the frog. All right, so on this layer, what I'll do here is invert that selection. And you can see the ants, see the ants on the outside of the document. What I need those ants to be is around the frog only. Uh, select invert. Okay, so the marching ants aren't there. Just the yellow and black ones, but you see it now it's on the frog. You can take the fill tool now and then you can fill in this green. And now if you want this to be like at the very bottom you could do that. You could put this at the very bottom or you could put it at the very top and then turn it to multiply or overlay. But in order for that to work you have to have a gray background. So notice I have a layer here that's just filled with gray. Select none. So here's my layers again. Green, I'll turn off the gray. I have outline, crosshatch, color. And my last layer here that I sometimes have is something that I can stylize the lines a little bit more. So oftentimes you'll see these types of drawings with the, like a wider line that goes around certain elements and it, it makes it interesting. So having lines that are thick and thin are, it's a good thing, the, the line style, but sometimes we have thicker lines around things. Let me kind of illustrate that. So I gotta get a brush that has thicker lines. I'll double click the ink brush here. And I'll put up the size. Not that much. And sometimes it's just so much easier to delete this out and type 0.5. That way you have a good base. And this is control bracket because I said it that to be that shortcut in one of the previous videos. I just have the undo button handy. I'm then trying to get a thicker line that's thicker than most, but not too thick. That one's way too thick. That's not too bad. Let's try it out. So on some uh, certain elements that are on the outside, I'll go in and make these thicker lines. And try to eliminate some of the detail. And it takes, it really is one stroke. If you mess up, you have to redo it. Okay, better. And sometimes you can fill in strokes later but really I just try to keep them as close to the original black line as I can and anything that's up front I'll do this too like this foot in the background it's in the background so I wouldn't do that to that foot that needs a thinner line so this is a, a way of presenting depth to an individual this leg is up front. 
and this toe is in front of that leg or the other toe Now this is a little harder because that right here actually switches. So I want something that blends that line in. There we go. And then after you get the, the stuff that you know is right, then you go back and you look for the things that look wrong. There we go. So it's a little bit more style to it. And you can always take and erase back some of that too on the inside if you wanted to, but it's on a layer, so you can do that. Yeah. So sometimes I'll keep keep the form okay. Just erase back the line a little bit. Here's another tip for that. Uh, if you take the opacity and you can drop down the opacity of this layer. If you, if you need to work on the shape of things, like the shape here. Now you can see the shape. So when it goes up, now you get the thickness. And you get the shape. Same with back here on this leg. Uh, let's say I want something that more looks like this. And like that. Good. to get used to that control bracket. All right, so that's how, you know, I deal with line art. Um, I'll, I'll deal with it on a, a different layer and make the lines thicker on those layers. I'll deal with cross hatching on a separate layer. But I'll take my time on things, uh, only only the outline part of things. And now you see there's two different depths. You got the wide, you went uh, a little bit thinner. And now you can touch up all the mid, like this one. And this one. And you leave the ones in the background thin.
Alright, so I hope you enjoyed, and let's move on to the next video.